Hey, friendo, Steve here. Welcome back to the channel. Figured because Money in the Bank was this past week, uh, and we've already had one cash in with Nikki Cross successfully cashing in on the champion Charlotte Flair. Uh, we'd go ahead and do a tier rank thing where we take a look at all the Money in the Bank cash ins over the years and rank them all before we get started. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and the like button to help grow the Russell Juice. We passed 20,000 subscribers last this past week, uh, this weekend. This is pretty cool. And that's all because you guys are out there hitting that subscribe button, and I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and hop right into this list. Why don't we? Here it is. I created this thing. There was already one out there, but... Uh, I feel like it wasn't updated and I didn't know how to add pictures to it, so I just went ahead and did my own. You can look up uh, the tier rank thing. It's just under the Real Going In Raw Twitter account, so you can probably find it somewhere. Just do a search on Money in the Bank or Real Going In Raw. I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Uh, let's see here. All right, so let's once again go down our criteria. We've got Legendary. We've got cool moment. We've got, eh, eh. And then we've got never should have happened. And, and that they should have done it a different way. Never should have happened. Now, obviously, we got Big E sitting right here. Uh, this dude is probably not going to be ranked because as of right now, he has not cashed in his money in the bank. He's probably not going to until they get him over to Raw anyways. So let's go ahead and get this sorted out. First off, Look, <clears throat> there is one in my estimation that is far and away the most legendary cash-in of all time. I've already talked about it here on the channel. I did a whole video about it. Seth Rollins cash-in at WrestleMania 31. I was there. I thought it was great. That's my first entry. That's my number one awesome cash-in of all time. Moving on, we're going to take a look at... Mm, oh, another legendary cash-in, in my opinion... It was the very first one at New Year's Revolution, Edge cashing in on John Cena. That was a pretty big deal. Uh, let's move on. Uh, all right. Do any other deserve to be legendary? I mean, legendary is a big deal. I will. Uh, there's two others that I would consider for legendary. The crowd popped huge, huge. When Dolph Ziggler cashed in on Alberto Del Rio on Raw in like 2000 and 2013, I think it was. I think it was 2013. That was a big, big deal. It was really cool. People loved it. Uh, it's kind of crazy he didn't go kind of further. Uh, but he got concussed and stuff like that. So what are you going to do? So that, I'll, I'd put that up there with Legendary. And then another one, my personal favorite. Uh, well, not, not my personal favorite, but one of my personal favorites is RVD versus John Cena. Now, this is not a surprise cash-in. It is a declaration cash-in where a dude says, I'm cashing this in right now. And then uh, he does it at one night stand, and it's like one of my favorite matches of all time because that crowd was absolutely nuts. It was really cool. So that goes up there in legendary for me. Do any other belong? Do any of these others belong in legendary? Uh, I kind of mm, don't really feel like it. Uh, let's move on. Some of these trash ones. <sighs> so Otis and losing his to Miz to get that title on Bobby Lashley. It was just a crummy story. Now, me personally, as many of you out there who might be listeners of Going In Raw, the show, you might know that the Otis winning the Money in the Bank moment was one of my favorite moments in the history of Going In Raw because I won predictions with Otis that year. And it was an awesome moment. That being said, I never was any under... I, I was never under any... Uh, illusions that he was a good candidate for Mr. Money in the Bank. Thought he was a terrible candidate for Mr. Money in the Bank because he didn't really act like a human being. Uh, and then they, they got that title over to Miz in a really comedic, stupid way. It, didn't la it lacked all drama and tension. And then uh, I did actually like when Bobby Lashley beat Miz for the title, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about uh, Money in the Bank cash-ins. Uh, another one that never should have happened was Sandow's cash-in on John Cena. 
That was awful. It was at the height of the Lol Cena wins thing. Damian Sandow, I feel like he could have gone to the moon, in the words of Cameron Grimes. I thought he was awesome, and Vince McMahon really should have done a lot more with him. Um, <coughs> moving on, I'm sorry. Let's add some to the eh, category. In terms of meh, I'd give it to Kane cashing in on Rey Mysterio and Jack Swagger cashing in on Chris Jericho. Ugh. Kane cashing in on Rey Mysterio. I watched that. I watched all these back before I did this. And it, it was for the World Heavyweight. Both these are for the World Heavyweight Championships. Kane didn't need it. I don't know why they put it on him. It was a secondary belt then. Same with Jack Swagger. He cashed in on Chris Jericho after he was speared by Edge. Uh, it was just sort of like a eh, moment. I didn't think either of these were all that cool. Maybe some people out there disagree. Uh, let's see here. A couple more meh ones. So I watched it back, and I'm a huge fan, a huge fan of CM Punk. But... This moment where he cashed in on Jeff Hardy, eh, fans didn't really care. If you watch that back, they don't really, they don't really pop or anything. They kind of pop when he cashed in on Edge, which is right here. But I'll be honest with you, not really that much. It was just kind of like, eh. People were really, they, they didn't really seem to be too much into CM Punk back then. And the, the Vince didn't seem to be either because they just took that title right back off him. Maybe that was the next year. No, I think, yeah, I don't know when that was. But they took that title back off him. Uh, let's see here. Another meh moment. Uh, I'm going to give it to... Uh, um, mm, I feel like a bunch of these are going to be cool moments. Baron Corbin. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to Never Should Have Happened. Oh, another meh moment was uh, this. This actually goes under never should have happened. And it's when Big Show interrupted the match between John Cena and CM Punk. So John Cena cashed in his contract on CM Punk when he was champion. It was like a declaration thing. He was like, hey, I'm going to do this. And then the Big Show came out and he interrupted it and DQ'd it. And so the title didn't change hands. That's stupid. That's a terrible use of the briefcase. Never should have happened. Braun Strowman winning never should have happened. And Braun Strowman cashing in at Hell in a Cell by just saying, hey, we're gonna, I'm going to cash in at Hell in a Cell. By declaring, it's just lame. And then Brock Lesnar came in and interrupted that match. And it went to a, a, a disqualification or a, they just threw the match out. Oh, boy, that was terrible. Uh, cool moment. I'll be honest with you. Brock Lesnar winning. I know. I know a lot of people are probably going to give me shit for that. But I'll be honest, him coming in, and then when he actually won it, he was doing like using his like a, 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 a like it was a radio on his, uh, on his, what do they call those things back in the day? Boom boxes. It looks like it was like a boom box. That was kind of cool, to be honest. With you. That was kind of a cool moment. Um, let's head over to uh, the very first women's money in the bank. I like this moment because uh, Mike Kyoto milked the shit out of it. That guy was like, are you sure? You sure you want to do this? You sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to do this? Wait, hold on a second. Am I getting this right? You want to do this. This is something you want to do. Is something you're interested in. You sure you want to do it? It took forever for him to actually get that bell rung. And uh, Carmella cashed in on Charlotte. Pretty cool moment. Similar to that. Another cool moment. Alexa Bliss cashing in on Nia Jax. She beat the crap out of Ronda Rousey uh, to win that title. Uh, she did it. And then she, she cashed in on Nia Jax. Thought it was a pretty cool moment. I don't think there's been like, so far, with the women, I don't think there's been like a legendary moment. Like, these are all pretty iconic moments here, uh, up here in the legendary. And I feel like the women are kind of missing that one legendary cash-in moment so far. But they've had a much smaller sample size than the men. There's only been, what, four of them? And they've all been pretty cool moments. Bailey cashed in on Charlotte after the Iconics beat her up. That was kind of, I think that was like a SmackDown after Mania or something. So that was kind of a cool moment. It's a good moment for Bailey uh, to cash in that way. And then I thought that Nikki Cross, I thought they could have done the story better. They could have built to it more, but I'll be honest with you. It was on Raw. It was a cool moment. And it was awesome for Nikki Cross. 
I was really happy she won. I think she's a great person. This one is going to catch me some shit. And it's The Miz cashing in on Randy Orton. To be honest with you, there's been times when I've liked The Miz. But by and large, I kind of couldn't care any less than I do for the guy. So I just, I just think that his cash in, his reign 10 years ago, 11 years ago, whenever it was, just couldn't care. I just, it doesn't do anything for me. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. Dean Ambrose cashing in on Seth Rollins. I'm not going to put that up there with, with all these great moments, but it sure as hell is a cool moment. It's one. It's probably up there. It's like cooler than Brock, that's for sure. I'm going to put Brock back here after these three women's moments because I feel like they all kind of go hand in hand. I'll, I'll put Bailey ahead of Alexa Bliss, and then after Brock is Nikki Cross or Nikki A.S.H., uh, Edge cashing on the Undertaker is pretty cool, but like he had already done it two years prior, two years or one year prior. Yeah, it was two years prior because uh, RVD was the second one. So yeah, that was a cool moment, but it was kind of like ah, eh, whatever. Kind of straddles the line between cool moment and meh. Sheamus, I'm all catch some shit for this one. I'm fine with it. I maintain this is a this is a rad cash in right here. The both these these Triple H cash ins or uh, Triple H assisted cash ins, I should say. This was a cool moment because it came right on the heels of Roman Reigns spearing Triple H. It was actually a 48 hours. It was like a, one of the pay-per-views and then the Raw afterwards uh, that was actually really well booked. And for a moment, they had nailed down Roman Reigns. He was over. That crowd was into it. He was just going around wrecking people. He wrecked Triple H. He wrecked Vince McMahon. Uh, Sheamus came in and cashed in. He was wrecking Sheamus. And then I think they put that title up at the Royal Rumble after all that. So uh, I'll be honest. That was kind of a cool moment. I might catch some shit for that one. Randy Orton, I watched this one back. Oh, this was rough. Randy Orton cashing in on Daniel Bryan. That kind of goes up here, I'll be honest with you. Because, man, nobody saw it coming. I don't think uh, the crowd was going crazy. Daniel Bryan had just won that thing at SummerSlam. It was just sort of the grand tradition of SummerSlam having a lot of bummer endings. SummerSlam is that one. It's the tradition where, like, they just, man, they just... Give, leave you with a bad taste in your mouth, but kind of in a cool storyline way, you know? Uh, Daniel Bryan cashing in. We'll go uh, up here sort of along the same lines as Brock. Like, he comes in, he cashes in. Oh, this thing about the Triple H Randy Orton one, too. Watch that back. It's hilarious because Triple H gives Daniel Bryan, who's all jacked and, like, ready to go. Like, he just won a match, and he's ready to throw. I think he beat Cena or something. And, uh, and Triple H gives him a pedigree. It's a good two minutes. Between uh, maybe one, when Randy Orton's like, I want to cash in, and Triple H's like, rig the bell now. And then uh, Orton just pins him. He doesn't even give him an RKO or anything. And that pedigree laid out Daniel Bryan. Pedigree's the strongest move in professional wrestling, man. All right, uh, let's see here. Never should have happened. Baron Corbin is one of the worst creatively handled performers in WWE current day. Now we are seeing what this dude can do with this whole broke, sad Baron Corbin. He is great. I loved his look back then. I uh, I liked his character back then. When he first came up from NXT, I thought they weren't doing it like an okay job with him. He cashed in on John Cena. Jinder Mahal interfered, and uh, and uh, and Jinder. I'm sorry, and Baron Corbin. Isn't that how it went? Or did he cash in on Jinder and John Cena interfered? No, I think it was John Cena. Yeah, I think he cashed in on yeah he cashed in on Jinder because Jinder was the champion at the time. I think I'm pretty sure it's how it went. That is how it went. And then John Cena messed with him and he he ruined his cash in, and uh, that was a bummer to me. That was an absolute bummer to me because I think that he could have been one of them dudes who had the title, who like cashed in, got the title, and they could have really done something with that. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I. Mr. Kennedy, I mean, this goes up there with Edge, I guess, because, like, as far as being a Money in the Bank winner, I know they really liked Mr. Kennedy. I get that. He is one of the reasons I stopped watching wrestling when he started showing up, because I was like, I don't know what this guy's deal is. He looks like a like a default creator wrestler who has, like, a decent announcer's voice. Like, I wouldn't get hyped if Michael Buffer stepped foot in the ring. Why should I care about this guy? I just didn't care about him. And I thought having him win money in the bank was kind of lame. 
apparently he uh, then dropped that briefcase to Edge because he was injured. They thought he was injured. And then he had a weird injury history thing. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, this Alberto Del Rio cash in on Punk. That was just used to further a feud between CM Punk and Kevin Nash because Kevin Nash beat up CM Punk and then Alberto was able to cash in on him. But it was really lame. I don't like Alberto Del Rio, so I'm going to give that a meh. Actually, no, screw that. I'm going to give that a never should have happened because like that shouldn't have been CM Punk losing that title right there. He should have kept that title throughout that whole period of time. So there you have it. And then Big E right here. I'm hoping he has a legendary cash in. I'm hoping we can put this up here. I just put that up there because I'm hopeful. But it's not doesn't count yet. It doesn't count yet. Okay, Big E, you got to cash in first on Big Bobby Lashley or the Tribal Chief. If he cashes in on Tribal Chief, holy crap, that'd be something special. Uh, anyways, there you go. There's my uh, tier rank for money in the bank cash-ins. Of course, this is all up for debate. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like I said, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I know you're going to say, oh, Steve, this list is terrible. Oh, I can't believe you put Kane in the meh category. Kane belongs in the meh category. I'm sorry. I don't know what you want me to say. Really wasn't that big of a deal. Big giant dude cashing in on a little Rey Mysterio after a match with... Uh... Mm, it's on the tip of my tongue. Rey Mysterio had just fought... Look. Look. I forget who it was. Anyways... Uh... Boy, that's going to bug me until I figure it out in like five minutes. Anyways, check out one of these other tier rank videos. You just fought. 